I want to see the Alliance map. Tell me more about Kent. Basim has written, claiming to have found the woman Fulke and asking for your aid. He has taken shelter at St. Hadrian's Priory. Any news of Sigurd? Nothing he mentioned. But if he has found the paladin Fulke, Sigurd cannot be far behind. I will go as soon as I can. Good. Be safe, Eivor. I should talk to hide them about my next targets. Bessem has news of Sigurd. I should find him soon. Did not Augustine make a distinction between faith and understanding? That is my point. So you hold no stock in faith, only in the rational... What I mean to say is, faith is paramount. Yes, for without it, Christ's sacrifice means nothing. He died to save us, did he not? From the original sin of Adam and Eve? Yet evil persists. Yes, evil persists, because he gave us free will. Does a newborn babe, slain by a despot, have free will? Yes. No, I mean, that is too simplistic. Or the priest whose heart is torn from his chest by the wolf? Judas, who was predestined to betray the Nazarene? Uh, some argue Judas was used. Do my ears deceive me, Brother Hortbert? You question the scriptures? Declare Judas an innocent? A preposterous blasphemy! No, no, uh, that is not what I said. <laughs> Brother Cedric... Am I not the most pious of his servants? 
Out! Out! Making new friends? A person's tongue gives you a taste of their heart, Eivor. And such information is often useful. And how do these sallow Christians taste? It was only a figure of speech, Eivor. And I have tired of it already. Is this how it must be between us? Of course not. I'm grateful that you have come. So what of the Joy Kang of Fulke? In your message, you say you tracked her to Kent. She is here somewhere. And as of last month, Sigurd was with her. But there is no guarantee this will be the case tomorrow. So, what is your plan? We are deep in their god's heartland. A heathen and a heretic. To hunt Fulke, we'll need a Christian snare. Fulke is hardly a saint herself. These Christians abhor her strange ideas. True. But unlike us, she can carry herself as one of them. She won't hide from everyone. Not with a prisoner in tow. So, where to begin? I've made a friend. Abbot Cunibert. Full of pious fire. But with ambition that far outweighs his wit. And what does your friend Cunibert know? Come. I will introduce you. And we'll hear the full tale together. Have you found some peace in your time alone, Basim? I am always at peace, and never alone. I move among the people of the world with great joy. I watch them, study them, learn from them at all times. This is our duty. The Hidden One's calling. You know, for the first time since we met, you sound more like your apprentice than yourself. <laughs> Surely Hytham sounds like me, if I have taught him well. Your creed and your tenets, you mean? That's right. And our sense of, how should I say, deep responsibility to the betterment of mankind. That's quite an ambition, but it doesn't explain what you see in Sigurd. My brother is not so generous. Ah, but your brother is someone special, important, and I want him to see that. I hope to show it to him. Is this not a blessed plot? God's own country. And this Eden should be given to his servants to tend. Abbot Cunibert, this is the Norse I spoke of. Ah, yes. And quite a fearsome one at that. Basim says you know the paladin Fulke. Indeed. The Lady Fulke passed this way not more than a month ago. We talked, we drank. Very pleasant woman. And where is she? Eivor will be your axe, Abbot. Whether to fell a tree, or hew the limbs from an enemy. What have you promised him? Oh, just a trifle, Eivor. A little problem I believe you can help me with. If you know where Fulke is, do not rattle my bucket. Tell me now and we'll talk terms later. The hot-tempered one stirs up strife, Basim. Will this rebellion Kate Dane do what I ask? Let's cut to the point. What favor would you ask in exchange for Fulke? Some weeks ago, our elderman in Kent was called to God. A terrible loss. King Alfred has chosen his replacement, but has not yet announced the name. I must know it. Now. All of Kent will see soon enough which Thane he has chosen. Why not wait? I want early access. To woo him, before his exalted position is made public and every fool is at his door. Who else knows the chosen man? The king's emissary. Sent with a letter of congratulations to the new elderman. Intercept him and bring me the news. When I know the thane's name, we'll discuss how I might win his favor. If we do this, how will you find Fulke? I want some kind of assurance. Do you have ears in every church, abbey, and cathedral in Kent? Because I do. And I will find her. And we will do the deeds to staining for a Christian soul. This emissary, how will I find him? Tunbridge Monastery sent word that the King's men always pass a few nights in their hospitality. Begin there. I'll get the Elderman's name. You'll find Fulke. All in good time. 
Now, if we're done, I have business up the south coast. Falconston has the best fish in Wessex. Then I will find you there, when the Elderman's name is mine. Cunibert is ambitious, but well-connected. We will not find Fulke without him. I suppose we'll see. What will you do? I'm not done playing with these Christians yet. I will see you in Falconston. If Alfred's emissaries spend a few days here, someone may know where he went. I'm busy. Leave me be. <laughs> a bear! Get away with you! You're not welcome here. Are you sober enough to answer me? You have fine hair. It shimmers like woven silk. I don't have time for flattery. I seek Alfred's emissary. The only man of Alfred's I know is Orvin the Legless. And he is? <laughs> Haven't seen him in years. Probably dead drunk or just dead in a ditch. Why do you think they called him Legless? Because he has no legs? <laughs> He's a figure of speech, Lord in heaven. Did she speak to you? I'm troubled by the spirit. It is heresy to even think on it. Forget her word of her blasphemy. I'm in no mood for wind belching, so choose your words well. I heard the king's men came through here, caused a stir. A man of your wit noticed them, I bet. I am witty. Finally, someone sees. I'm always telling the wife, but will she listen? Will she bollocks? Alfred's emissary. Where? Him and the bard ended up in a copse by the bridge doing Lord knows what. Sounded like they were murdering a cat. Singing? If you say so. God teaches obedience and humility, and yet our abbot would defy Alfred. How oh, so? He's simply being a good shepherd, keeping Kent and rich lands in the hands of the church. But the Danes? Do they not nestle at our borders like ash scattered serpents? Danes in Kent? I don't. We are not friends. Be gone. I've no time for your twittering. They sent my husband to work at the Bayless Field, the lumber mill. They mean to fortify us against the Danes. My sister said they're all tall and strong, muscles rippling, hair braided and woven with spice. And what will you do? Stay away from me, stranger. The other side must be barred. Ra 
Radon Baron a Kluben Klimban. The heroine is where? You loitering and lollygagging. I'm looking for someone, an emissary from Alfred. Have you seen such a man? Ooh, la -de da Listen to you, all I and mighty. Get away with you, you valley lily. Tell me what you know, or this will go badly. For you, maybe. I'll be dead, and you still won't know a thing. You're a strange fish. Did you see the man or not? I did. He was getting pie-eyed with that barred gowan and causing quite a ruckus. They left together. See? That wasn't hard, was it? Harder than it should have been. There was a bard drinking with the emissary. I should find him, see if he knows anything. <laughs> You there. You alive. Patience is a tired horse. Plodity plod plod. Another tottering teeth sucker who can't hold his drink. Let's clear your head. Oh! Oh, it's cold as a witch's tit in here! you oh, what are you fed or wakes me I'm the one you sing of Bart stern of eye and scant of mercy have you not seen the ravens feasting in my wake enough your word mangles are making my hair ache you and Alfred's emissary were drinking in the tavern tell me where he went were we I was so ale addled Perhaps a small and silver thing upon my palm might help me recall? How about something long and sharp in your gut? All right, no need for that. You paint a vivid picture, Dane. He was headed to the white coast to the southeast, Dover Fortress. He said it is where they train those religious fanatics, zealots. They pray all night instead of sleeping. My thanks, and in return, wisdom. Too much beer piping will grow a fool in wit and words. My thanks, weaver of the obvious. Now leave me to my unholy punishment. The emissary made for Dover Fortress, on the southeast coast.
us not to draw attention here. If I could steal the letter without killing the emissary, it would keep me out of trouble. Guards! Guards! <laughs> Alfred's chosen elderman is a thing called Tetment. The abbot Kinnebert will want to know. It's rare to see Abbot Kinnebert down this way. Abbot who? You know, the rich. Oh, you must try my ale sometime. You must. My abbey brews the best in Kent. It's certain. Eivor, you have news? Kent's new elderman will be Thane Tedmund. Tedmund? Oh, the Lord is testing me. He is made mouse by you Danes. Barely leaves his fortress at Roosister. How might I gain his influence if he will not speak to me? Or to anyone? It is a puzzle. To inspire loyalty, Tetman must owe you something. Such is his life. Go on. A fortress stormed. A man kidnapped. If you beat back his enemy, saved him from sure death. His gratitude would be... Swell. It would know no bounds. But that fortress will be harder to pry open than a nun's knees. Perhaps. Perhaps not.
Are you hiding something, Bassam? There is a lumber mill nearby, correct? Beamersfield. Alfred invests much in fortifying Wessex, and uses our forests to do so. The mill provides his wood. Tedmund is there. Impossible! How do you know? I heard rumors that Tedmund had been lured out of self-exile to manage work on the fortifications of Canterbury. Taking him from a lumberyard is less dangerous than assaulting a fortress, but your rescue attempt will not have the same flair. Is it worth it? It may still work. Yes. Yes. Bring him to the Megaliths. And Fulke? When I have Tedman's fealty, you shall have Fulke. Now go. I will rustle up a small rescue party. I do a roaring trade at Reculver and Tunbridge. They pay well for my catch. The monks? Do those parchment-skinned Christians ever eat meat? Don't you believe in Jesus? <laughs> One more time, I'm telling you. If he says my books are dirty, <laughs> I'm wary of this abbot, Bassam. He is self-serving and evasive. Can he really deliver Fulke? The abbot is a friend of Fulke's. That is clear. So long as he doesn't suspect our motive, we may have a chance. Indeed. This brings to mind a story. Perhaps you've heard of it. The Scorpion and the Frog. A children's story? A cautionary tale. The Scorpion wants to cross the river, but he cannot swim. So he enlists the help of the Frog. The frog agrees to carry him on his back, extracting a promise that the scorpion will not sting him. Let me guess, the scorpion reneges, blaming his nature, and both drown. The scorpion crosses the river and stings an innocent man, killing him. So what does this tale tell us? That your stories are clouded, and their meaning doubly so? It shows that every tale has a thousand possible outcomes, many of which are surprising. If the abbot does not deliver Fulke, you will die at my hand. And we will continue our search. A sobering? Venusville is just ahead. Lead. I will follow. Hiya! If they see me, this will get messy. I hope this chase will catch us a plump hen. Once the abbot has Tedman's gratitude, he will deliver Fulke. It will cost us nothing more than this.
You prefer to work in the shadows. Once the abbot has Tedmund's gratitude, he will deliver Folke. It will cost us nothing more than this. If that leaden wit keeps his word. I should not be seen in this area. Stop caterwauling and you'll live. Live? Oh, saints protect me! Silence will save you, Tidman. Silence, not your saints. <laughs> Flee, my friend. We have the man we came for. Does this venture not set your blood ablaze? You don't prefer working in the shadows. And so we have. To steal a man, take him with swiftness, and escape without anyone on our heels. We hide in plain sight. Such is our way. But only until the moment of success. The final strike. I prefer to act and speak plain. Kings and lords who do not are often misunderstood. Yet as a leader yourself, you cannot deny that subtlety and intrigue are a cloak you must wear. How many of your clan know the true circumstances of Sigurd's absence? Hmm. You see my point. A leader must know when to speak and when to stay silent. For silence is not always a lie. It can feel like one. You truly... Halt, Danes! In the name of Alfred, King of Wessex, I demand you release his royal subject into my care. Come no closer, Christian, else your man dies by my blade. Please, I I'm not the man you want. Keep your eye on this one. He'll be worth a hefty bounty. Any false moves and I will snip your heels. We have your man. Now let's finish this shadow play and be gone. Are you sure that's Tedmund? He's dressed as a lord, but that man is shorter and fatter than I recall. I'm not Tedmund. I, I, I'm not. I, I swear upon the holy rood, I, I am not Thane Tedmund. What in heaven's name is happening here? Who are you? Speak quickly or I'll slit your throat and leave you for the crows. Shurgar. I, I'm called Shurgar. Lord Tedman pays me a measly coin to serve as his double. Brother Shergar, you are far from Augustine's priory. Uh, I left the cloisters many moons ago, Your Holiness. The monastic life was not my calling. <laughs>